It's time now to talk about one of the most used rooms in your house, the bathroom. If you're lucky enough to design yours from scratch, there are many things to keep in mind to create a functional space. Lucky for us, our own Shona Jensen just completed a reno. I'm obsessed with this reno. So she's sharing what she learned about tackling a bathroom redo. And uh, you got some knowledge on this, don't you, Shones? <laughs> I sure do. I'll tell you, it's been so fun sharing this whole reno with everybody. It's just added to the excitement on my end, too. So I'm glad you've loved it. Um, but this bathroom needed some help. Like, let's take a look at the before. So it was really dated. It was dark. It was cramped. It had finishings that I wanted to elevate for our home. It had a Jack and Jill door in it. And for those people, they're a little bit uh, less common nowadays. But in older homes and some newer ones, they put a door from one bedroom and another door from like the hallway or sometimes from another bedroom. So there's two entrances into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I decided, no, that doesn't work for me because I needed to drastically change the layout here to fit in, squeeze out every inch of this space I possibly could. So I closed off one of the doors that goes to our principal ba uh, bedroom not only did that give me a better layout, but it gave me more closet space in my bedroom, and we all know we need that. So uh, that was a total win. But what that enabled me to do is move the toilet to where the door was, pop a separate shower and soaker bathtub in that spot, and give me a longer vanity. It was like check, check, check when it came to just closing off that one door. Now, you are very good with splurge and save. Um, you always have been when it comes to, you know, your clothing, your home, whatever it is, you splurge and you save. Let's talk about the splurge first. Yeah, let's. Let's get into all the, like, luxuries. So I absolutely have to start with the floor. I mean, swoon. The minute I saw this hexagon marble mosaic floor, it's from Euro Tile and Stone, I was like, Oh, mine, 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 mine. I'm going to do everything that I need to do to make sure this floor is in my life. The grout in it is so small. It's so perfect for a bathroom floor or wall if you wanted to, or even a backsplash in a kitchen because it is so good for cleaning. There's nothing harder than cleaning grout. And you know, I'm the cleaning queen. And so it was gorgeous and easy to clean. Yeah, yeah, 100% yes. All in, all in. Yes, grout is like the bane of my existence trying to get in there. So that is, it's great news. Now, I loved how you continued it into the shower floor. You kept the marble going all the way up the shower and the tub surround. It's just so luxe. Now, we all know how important it is to measure your space. We've talked about it a billion times on the show. You know, measure, measure, measure. Mm -hmm. But I've never thought about measuring your body in the bathtub. That never even occurred to me. Uh, but you had to do this. You had to think about that. <laughs> you do. You absolutely do. And especially for a bathtub. Look, both Greg and I are six feet tall. Like, we're not little people. And that's why we're well aware of what we fit in and don't fit in. And there was no way I was going to, you know, have my dream bathroom. And I'm going to have a bathtub that I feel like I'm sitting in a puddle. You know, like, I need, like everything underwater you know what i'm saying i'm talking to all the tall people out there um, and so you have to really take that into account and one of the best tips i actually got it from my mom from when she did her house build is you have to sit in a bathtub and i thought well no i've got all the measurements online uh you know of course i thought i knew better <laughs> um, but i went to a showroom and boy was she right because here's what you have to think about. Originally, I wanted a clawfoot tub. I wanted kind of a vintage looking kind of tub for here because we're in like a, you know, a vineyard farmhouse. And what you have to remember is all of the measurements are to fit the space. So the roll top on the side of the tub, the angled, long, tall, angled back, and the feet that stick out, all of those things are in the overall dimensions. So when you have a style of bathtub like that, for example, your actual space that you fit in shrinks a lot. Like I couldn't believe the difference. So the bathtub I was over the moon to find was the one that we went with. It's from uh, Victoria and Albert and it's the iOS tub in matte white. Yeah, I said matte white, it's gorgeous. Um, but here's the deal. Um, it's made from a volcanic limestone. So it holds the heat really well and it's got a really thin edge around it. So that leaves all of the inside space. You get so much more real estate or tub space in it because you're not being taken up by really thick tub walls or by curvy designs. 
and also look for really straight sides. Somebody asked me if the straight sides were still comfortable, totally comfortable, it doesn't have to be on an angle. And that way, this 59 and a half inch tub fits six foot us and then some. I can put my legs straight right out. It was oh. an absolute perfect. So you must sit in the bathtub that you want. I highly recommend that. That is <laughs> so good. The, the bathtub, the sofa, the, the mattress on the bed, like all these things sit in it. They even say the toilet. I mean, have at it. If you're at the showroom, like sit on it, you know. <laughs> You're going to be spending a lot of time on it. Okay, beautiful. Uh, your Definitely. next tip really is think outside the box. So tell me a little bit about the shower system. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say think outside the wall. So <laughs> to be able to put a shower system here in here, a separate shower, which was on my absolute must list, the shower head and plumbing couldn't fit in the back wall. It couldn't fit in the side wall because they're not thick enough and they were external walls. So I designed a way to, you know, I'm a no, oh, no, I want it. I'm a dog with a bone with things I want. And I found this stunning shower system from Perrin and Row, where part of it is actually exposed. Now, most people would attach the rod to a wall, but no, I attached it to the glass that went up. And this way, the plumbing part can fit on the same half wall where the bathtub is. So that's all the nuts and bolts and, that we need. And all I had to do was attach the shower head rod and the shower head to the glass. Now, it's absolutely gorgeous. It was in my brain and I, it came to life, but I have to say it's not super easy to do. So if anybody wants to take inspiration from this, make sure you're working with a glass company that can handle the job. It wasn't easy um, and you really wanna make sure they're on board with what your vision is. Okay, talk about problem solving. Love all the splurges. So worth it, every single one. Let's talk a little bit about uh, saving because I know you saved a little bit with the box store uh, vanity, right? Yeah, you know, I'm an online shopper. I scored an <laughs> online vanity with the marble top. It was like awesome. The, uh, the design I liked, everything. The only thing I really disliked was the hardware that was on it, all the pulls and the handles. But that's such an easy fix. They just didn't have that luxe look I was looking for. So I just popped them off and I just got these absolute stunner chrome ones from M-Tech, popped the old ones off that didn't sit my style, popped the new ones on, it elevated it to a whole nother level. Lovely, you're loving your bathroom, Shones? Love it. For the first time in my whole life, I actually sit and soak in the tub. Shona, you and your long legs deserve all of the <laughs> luxe. Thank you so much for taking us through your space <laughs> and sharing your tips. I love it.